Hi everyone, this is Bobby from bn-games.com and I have one question for you. What is the biggest problem retro gamers face today, besides reliable friends of similar age and interest in the hobby? That's right, being able to play your favorite retro consoles on modern displays. Today, we are looking at the OSSC, or Open Source Scan Converter, a device that will not only allow you to play a good number of your favorite retro consoles on your modern television, it will help make those old games look as good as your rose-tinted memories might remember them. The OSSC is a $150-ish dollar device that takes video signal from older display cables such as SCART and VGA and line doubles the image to output to your HDTV. With current firmware, some sources can be scaled up to five times their original resolution using the line doubling technique. Now, let me first say I am not qualified to explain this in much more technical detail. Suffice to say, it can make really old video games look extremely sharp on modern displays. For an in-depth analysis on what the OSSC can do compared to other scaling devices like it, I really strongly recommend checking out My Life in Gaming's review of the OSSC and the FrameMeister, which is another popular device that can do even more than this thing can. My particular focus is to show how you might record or livestream your own gameplay. There are plenty of reviews of this device describing what it does and basic use, but I did not find a good video showing how someone might want to use it to record gameplay or livestream. Most of the hardware I'm using in this video will also be linked below in the description. For those of you looking for a plug and play solution, this is about as easy as it's going to get. Keep in mind, it's not always plug and play. However, when purchasing the OSSC, you have the option to buy the unit by itself. Don't! Make sure to buy the remote. As far as I've been able to tell, you can't access any of the OSSC's deeper features without it. You might as well buy the power supply as well. Don't be a cheap ass. For recording purposes, I have purchased a few HDMI splitters to try, and we'll be using the Elgato Cam Link 4K as our capture device on my laptop. For our test today, I will be using SCART cables through both my Model 2 Sega Saturn as well as my debug kit PlayStation 1. Make sure to buy good reliable cables for your consoles, otherwise the signal may not sync or you may get line noise in the audio. First, I'm going to plug my SCART cable into the OSSC, which is already plugged into the console. Next, I'm plugging the power supply into the unit and I'm going to get it situated so it's easiest to get to the HDMI out. I'm using an HDMI splitter so I can play on the TV while the game is being captured on the computer. Footage on the computer will be delayed making gameplay impossible. One of the splitter's outputs is going to my receiver which is plugged into my TV. The other will go to the Elgato capture device. The input HDMI that I'm plugging in now will go into the output of the OSSC itself. Please forgive the rat's nest of cables, this is my first test and it's not a permanent setup. But once everything is hooked up and ready to go, I'll power on the OSSC and move on to the laptop itself. Today I will be using a 2019 Razer Blade 15 laptop to record. I reviewed this particular unit which is on my channel. You don't need such a powerful computer to record gameplay, but it certainly helps. Many issues with recording are due to people attempting to use hardware that is too old and slow to record. In my experience, live streaming requires a beefier PC for a reliable stream. This particular Elgato capture device requires the use of a USB 3.0 port, so make sure your PC has one before purchasing. The reason I am using this particular Elgato is due to video compatibility. The resolution of consoles over HDMI could be considered non-standard, and older Elgato units, which I have and tested, do not work. When you first turn on the OSSC, you'll get this grayscale image on your television. Right here, I'm plugging the Elgato HDMI into the splitter. And as you can see, it's now showing up in the preview. 
What you don't see in this video is that I ended up changing to the Elgato game capture software as I kept getting audio sync issues with the cam capture software this particular capture unit was designed to be used with. It works perfectly fine in the game capture suite though. I also did some testing with OBS which is used for live streaming and it seems to work with a lot of tweaking but my primary use is for recording uh, for YouTube and the game capture gave me the best results. You will need to test with your own hardware and tweak where needed. In this clip I changed from line doubling to line tripling mode with the remote behind the camera which in essence is 720p. Now 720p may not seem that impressive compared to today's device's resolution but this is line doubling from a 240p source which is a postage stamp compared to your 4K televisions. In my testing, I could not get a 4X or 5X scaling to display correctly on my TV, and the game capture did not recognize the signal anyway, so 3X is what I was left with, which I'm perfectly fine with. I am currently running the .81 firmware, and I am aware that the .85 firmware is out at the time of this video, and I'm waiting on an SD card to arrive so I can update and test this all again. For now, this is a better result than I could have hoped for. We're now going to switch to my debug PlayStation 1, which I've also reviewed on this channel some time ago. For this test, we're going to now use Jet Moto 3, which is one of my favorite PlayStation 1 games and I think criminally underrated. Unlike the Saturn test, the PS1 appears to be changing internal resolutions, causing the capture device to need to catch up. I found that there were brief millisecond skips every time the resolution changed, which also created multiple separate video files. More testing will be needed to be done with the upgraded firmware to see if I can reduce that. Otherwise, be aware.
Overall, I'm very happy with the results this little device has shown thus far. When my CRTs are no longer viable to be fixed, this device and others like it will keep retro gaming alive with real hardware. Streamers and reviewers looking to get the best picture for their content have a great resource in the OSSC. It's cost effective and it just works. I have only had the device for a brief time, but I see it becoming a primary tool in my content creation. It literally makes me want to make new videos. If you're looking to capture or record retro hardware, it's one of the best options out there and I can't recommend it enough. In the upcoming part two of our OSSC adventure, we will be looking at the NAC Splitfire, a device that lets you record right off your arcade cabinets in tandem with the OSSC. Subscribe and don't miss it.